Thank you for the opportunity to gather together in your name, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead and read the first one, and then the second one. Ephesians, Who's got Ephesians, Ephesians 1? I have Ephesians 1. Okay. So I'm first. Yeah, so that's a prayer. All right. So, Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you would give us the spirit of wisdom and of revelation and the knowledge of you that the eyes of our hearts would be enlightened, that we may know and comprehend the hope to which you have called us, that we may know and comprehend the riches of your glorious inheritance in the saints and the immeasurable greatness of your power toward us who believe. Amen. 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 Okay, Don. Okay. Uh, Ephesians 3.16. Father, in Jesus' name, we also pray that according to the riches of your glory, you would grant us to be strengthened with power through your spirit in our inner being, so that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith that we, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that we may be filled with all the fullness of God. Amen. So God wants us to get it. And we say, I say that every time, probably, I come up here. But God wants us to understand what he's got for us. He wants us to be filled with himself. He wants us to be filled with his love. He wants us to be able to grasp the immensity of his love, the length, depth, breadth, and height of his love, and to be filled all the way up with that. He wants us to grasp what he's got for us as far as who we are in him, our inheritance in him. So anyway, um, with that in mind, um, I guess if I have a t if I have a title for this, I would, it would be, um, I don't know what the title would be. <laughs> you what? He doesn't know what the title is. I don't know what the title would be. Um, but the first, the first half, more or less, we will be looking at, talking about, reading some word on ask, or whatever you ask will be given. Whatever you ask will be given. So let's go to John chapter 14, verse 10, through verse 14. John 14? Yeah, John 14. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And um, before I get too far down the road here, uh, What I want to look at and is asking and speaking and the difference between asking and speaking. Because there is a difference. <coughs> Verse 10, do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these will he do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. A lot about asking there. But one thing that I hadn't actually picked up on before, even though I know it, uh, this is really all about relationship. Our relation, Jesus' relationship with his Father. Because of that relationship with his Father, he could ask and things get done. And it's because of our relationship with Jesus, with the Father through Jesus Christ, that we can ask and things get done. That we can yeah. ask and receive. <laughs> It's not, if an unbeliever, if somebody doesn't believe in God, ask God for something, he doesn't have any, he doesn't have an account with him, basically. You know, he has no relationship with him. So what we're talking about is, is uh, Jesus is in relationship with his Father, and he is fully confident, because of that relationship, that he's going to have what he asked for. He's fully confident. And we should have the same confidence when we ask for something in Jesus' name. 
because of our relationship with the Lord, right? Everything Jesus did, was doing, is through or by his Father. Right. Everything is not in his own stuff. It's not because of his own. It's because of, it's because the Father has the stuff. Jesus then goes on to say that the one who believes in him will do the same things, right? Right. So what is it to believe in Jesus? To believe everything he said. Right? It's to believe everything he said. But it's more than that. It's to entrust ourselves. It's to yeah. entrust ourselves yeah. to right. the Lord. Yeah, that's right. It's to entrust ourselves. Entrust? E-N. Entrust. Entrust. Entrust ourselves to him. In other words, put your trust in him. Yeah, it's more than... It's, it's, Vicki has entrusted herself to me as she trusts me to take care of her. She trusts me to go to work for a living, right? By the way, happy 20th. Oh, thank, <laughs> thank you. you. That's right. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> happy 59th. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's quite an accomplishment. <laughs> <laughs> So what day was your song? Christmas Day. Oh, Christmas Day. And your two days before Christmas? Yeah, 23rd. yeah, 23rd. Jesus says he will do whatever we ask that the Father would be glorified. That's why. Or honored, or praised, or celebrated. So when Jesus, when we ask for something and the Lord does it, it's to bring honor and praise and glory, celebration to the Father. Right? That's what the word says. <clears throat> the word ask in verse 13 and 14 is, and that phrase right there, is really a very strong, very strong word. Um, it isn't how we typically, at least in our English-speaking world, think of ask. If I ask you to get me a glass of water, you have a choice, right? If I ask you, can I have the keys to your car because I need to drive to the other side of the island, you have a choice, <laughs> right? <laughs> you have a choice. Usually when we think of asking for something, it's because someone has possession or control of something we want or need, and, and so we ask and hoping or even expecting to receive from them based on a relationship, right? Not so with this word. It means to demand something due. So when we are asking in Jesus' name, it is to demand something due us. Demand something that is due. Due, D U E? Yeah, due oh, us. Okay. I can't hear anybody else. <laughs> So you go to the bank to withdraw some cash, and you fill out the slip, and you give the slip to the teller, and the teller gives you what you're asking for. They don't say not this time. They don't say not this time. <laughs> you are asking for something that is due you. It's yours. That's a good example. Right. It's yours. They're not going to argue with you. Yeah. The, the bank president, if you're wanting to close out your account, may argue with you. You know, you really don't want to do it, but, but really, um, they're not going to argue with you when you want to withdraw some cash. So when we understand this and go to God and ask for something with the knowledge that all things are ours, all things are ours, does it say that in the Bible? Does it say all things are yours? What's the address? Do you know? All things are his. First Corinthians 3.21 Therefore let no one boast in men, for all things are yours. Everything that we need for life, for health, for godliness, everything that we need is ours through our relationship with God. 
Everything is ours. And so when we go to, and so when we ask for something that is due us, it's ours. It's already ours through our relationship with the Lord. It's kind of like our marriage where everything that's yours is mine and everything that's mine is mine. Yeah. That's right. That's the way it works. That's not the way it's supposed to work, but that's the way it works. So all things really means all things. In God there is no lack. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall lack, or I lack nothing, or I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. That's based on relationship. I lack nothing. In Christ... Everything is yours. And when we get a hold of this reality and this truth, it will completely blow our minds and open up, open things up to us because when, because I don't have a problem asking for something that's already mine. It's true. With the expectation of receiving it. Yeah. And so if all things are mine through God and he's my father, yeah, and I'm really in a relationship with him. Absolutely. All things are mine. I can go to him in confidence and expect those things that he says are mine. So based on the word of God and our relationship as sons and our sons and daughters, we come boldly before the throne of grace, fully confident that we have what we ask for. 1 John 5.14 says... Now this is the confidence that we have in him, that we, if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Yeah. This is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So how do we know what the will of God is? Takers? We read the word. The word. Yeah. What does the word say? Yeah. What does the word say? What's another word for testament? Will. What is, what is, what is that, another word for testament? What is that scripture will. that says so that That's we'll right. know the perfect will of God? Is that the one about renewing our minds in Romans 12? So um, that we'll know the perfect will of God? I don't know. We'll have to look it up. We'll look that up. <laughs> Romans 12. get me off track. Uh, maybe, yeah. Therefore, I urge you, brothers. First John 5.15. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions we've asked of him. So we know the word of God. We ask according to the word of God, right. knowing that all things are ours. We ask, and, and of course, you know, there, there's, there's always more to this. But um, anyway, and here's that word ask again. It's the same word ask. You know, you read that word ask, it says G154 in the Strongs, is um, throughout Scripture, throughout the New Testament. Petitions, it's not the same word, but it comes from the same word. So petitions is related to that word ask. The Word of God will not contradict itself. We may lack some understanding here and there, but the intent of the Word will never contradict itself. Itself. What is truth will always be truth. What is truth will always be truth. Right? The word will never contradict itself. Our understanding may trip us up now and then, but the word of God will never contradict itself. That's right. Okay, let's shift gears. So we've been talking about asking, and now we'll talk about saying. 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 Speaking it. Speaking it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's go to Mark chapter 11, verse 22. 11, 22, so Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. 23, for I assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Verse 22 could be accurately translated, 
Jesus answered, saying, Be constantly having faith in God. Or some translations will actually translate it, Have the faith of God. Yeah, right. <clears throat> Verse 23 can also be translated, Truly I am saying to you, Whoever says to this mountain, Be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that which he says comes to pass, it shall be his. The word says here, just means, there's nothing special about the word says. It just means to say, or to speak, or to command. It can be verbally, or in writing. I thought that was interesting when I'm reading that. Because I, in my uh, Bible program, I've got the Weiss word studies that come up, and whatever else I want to, several others, but right now I'm using the Weiss word studies. So I'm, whenever I select a portion of scripture, then the, the Weiss word studies breaks it down. So it's really cool. Uh, so I thought it was interesting that it says, specifically says, in word or writing. Uh -huh. Spoken, the spoken word or, or the written word. Yeah, okay. Whatever you say, whether you write it or whether you speak it, shall come to pass. The word doubt means to judge between two, or a divided judgment, or a wavering doubt. So the word doubt means to judge between two. If I'm doubting, I'm like, okay, God says this, but it looks like this. <laughs> so I'm wavering. I'm judging between the two. Who is right? What God says, or what the circumstance says? What God says, or what so-and-so says. I'm judging between the two, and it's up to me what to believe. Right. We take a look at James chapter 1, verse 5. This passage is specifically speaking about, or talking about asking for wisdom, but the principle of asking in faith applies throughout the word. So it says this passage in James, if we take, take a trip to James chapter 1, verse 5 and 6, I think, um, is specifically talking about asking for wisdom. But the principle of asking in faith is the same. 1.5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given. That's good stuff. Yeah. But, verse 6, but, let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For he who has a divided mind, for he who is judging between the two, the word says this, God, your word says, you'll give me wisdom if I ask for it. Yeah, but I feel like a fool. I think I'm going to stay with the fool. Not, but I mean, that's what happens, right? That's our decision, right? Yeah, that's our decision. Verse 7, let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord, for he is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. So when we ask for something from the Lord, or when we speak to that mountain, we don't want to have a double mind. We don't want to be judging between what the Word of God says and what circumstance says. The Word of God says, let's just stay with the Word of God. Let's just stay with the Word of God. He is a double minded man, unstable in all his ways. That's a pretty strong statement. That's a very strong statement. When we look in the mirror of the Word of God, I think we can all see that at times in our lives, we are that guy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can't speak for you, but I can speak for me. <laughs> right? Now, it's, this does not mean that what we ask or what we say will not be challenged, because it will be challenged. Pastor Bob's talked 
numerous times on the parable of the sower. And there's a particular soil, persecution comes because of the word. Right. The heat comes on, the heat gets turned on in your life to argue and to sway you right. to unbelief rather than to stay on the track of faith rather than, rather than, rather than to believe. It's up to us what we do with that challenge. So the promise of God, the word of God, what comes out of our mouths, what we're asking for, is going to be challenged. It's up to us what to do with that challenge. Right. So we have need of patience, right? How long did Abraham wait? <laughs> okay. A delay does not mean no. Amen. A delay does not mean no. It could simply mean the time's not quite right. It could simply mean that. The time's not quite right. It could also mean, and very likely means, that the enemy is challenging that. And the answer is on its way, but the enemy is resisting that to prevent it from getting to you. Wasn't there a, a spot in the Bible somewhere in Daniel or something? Yeah, Daniel. Where right. he and said, Gabriel said, I was, from the day you prayed, I was on my way. But the prince of Persia, or Tyrus, I think it was, whatever, Persia. withstood me. Yeah. So he had to call for it. So Michael was sent on his behalf. Michael dealt with, with his prince, with Satan. And the answer came through. Thing is, Daniel continued to press in for 21 days. He fasted and prayed for 21 days till the answer got there. What if Daniel had given up after three days of fasting? I guess that's not for me. What if Daniel had given up after 21 days? So the point I'm trying to bring is how often do we give up? Well, the answer's on its way. And we just give up. Because, you know, this is taking so long, I just can't believe for this anymore. I'm not gonna stand for this anymore. I don't think God wants, I don't think God loves me. <laughs> I don't think you heard me. I don't think it's God's will. So if we give up, I wonder if the answer doesn't come. That's, that's my point. If we give up, then we have yielded to the pressure of the enemy. If the enemy can talk us into changing our minds or talk us into believing, well, maybe it just isn't God's will, then he's one less skirmish. If he can convince me otherwise, then he's one less skirmish. And we've all been there, I think. Yeah. I think we've all had that take place in our lives where we stood for something, we stood for something, and then we just forget it, throw the towel in. So what do we do? We speak to the mountain as if it has no choice but to obey our words. We ask in faith as if no is not an option. Right. We ask in faith or speak to that mountain as if no is not even possible. I mean, you look at Jesus. Huh? You look at Jesus, and he's our example of how to walk this life. And he didn't struggle with things not happening. He, he knew his Father's will. <clears throat> he knew what needed to be done. He knew he was here to set the captives free. And he just did it. He knew he had authority over the weather. He knew he could walk on water. And Jesus had, a, had an intense relationship with his father. He spent lots of time praying through the night with his father. And I think too often we try to get things done when we really haven't spent any time with our father. When we really haven't got his mind on things. Well, I think that, that speaks to what you, what you just said about him spending time with the father. He, you know, he, he was tempted in every, every way like we are, so he had, 
get him. He had to fight through all the doubt and whatever, right. just like we do. But he spent time with the Father. And I, one of the things I was thinking about while you're talking about that is the John 6 where it says, how do we work, how do we work the works of God? This is the work of God that you believe. Right. So there's a work there's a work to in the process of the, of waiting for the manifestation of what we've asked for. There's the work of believing, which means which means constantly reminding ourselves of what God said, yeah. of spending time with Him, because it it just doesn't uh, it just doesn't pop on you. It, it's something that you have to work through. We, we have to it, we have to be intentional about it. Right. <laughs> in other words, it's a spiritual work. It is absolutely. Paul says in Ephesians 6, I'm not going to pull that out, but just a few words here. Having done all to stand, stand. Right. Having done all to stand, stand. Having done everything you can. Having prayed the prayers that you know to pray, having spoken to the mountain, stand. And keep on standing. Right. I like how I heard some people put it, you've, you've got to settle it in your heart. Right. You've got, to, you've got to have a subtle in your heart. And do things with purpose, like on purpose. Yes. I think I'm going to just about, just about wrap it up here. So, is there a difference between saying and asking? Between speaking and asking. Is there a difference? Sure there is. There has to be. Sure there is. You can speak to your kids and say, take out the garbage. Well, you, can ask. you speak to that mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea. You're not asking the kid to take out the garbage. You're not asking the mountain to move. You're telling it what you want to do, what you want it to do. There's a difference between asking and telling. Asking our Father for something can be like a petition that we fully expect to be fulfilled, right? Um, it's interesting that passage in um, 1 John chapter 5, if, if you read farther on in that passage where it's talking about asking, <clears throat> the context of that really has to do with asking for forgiveness for somebody that's in sin. If you read the next couple verses down. And then the forgiveness, the, it, the context is really to, if you see your brother sinning, ask, and they'll be forgiven. Right, and so we have, yeah, that's part of our responsibility as believers, is when we see somebody, one of our brothers or sisters, missing it, we say, Father, have mercy on them, forgive them. Jesus shed his blood for that. And they'll be forgiven. They don't, it's not that they have to go groveling and get beat up and beat themselves up. We just ask and we get forgiveness from them. That's what the word says. John chapter 4, no, John chapter 20, I think. Jesus talks about having whosoever sins we remit will be remitted. Whoever sins we retain will be retained. So we find these principles throughout the Bible. So I mean, I, I think uh, many years ago when I was listening to Kent Hagen all the time, he... Um, Jesus would appear to him and tell him things. And Kenneth Hagin would say, Lord, I believe it's you, and I believe what you're telling me, but I'm not going to receive it unless you show me in your word two or three places that, that it's true. And Jesus would always, in those cases, always give him two or three or more scriptures having to do with what he just told him. So out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, the matter is established. If I can't find what I'm teaching to be at least the principle to be in, in several places throughout the word, then I ought to just leave it alone until I get more revelation. I ought to just leave it alone until I get more revelation. So speaking or saying is more of a demand or a command. Sometimes you just got to speak to the mountain, right? Our work is to believe. Our work is to believe. Amen. Amen. Ask you, closes. Okay. Father, we just uh, continue to be so thankful for your word. That is the uh, 
final explanation on everything. And we just ask you to continue to help us to rise up in you and do our work to believe in, to believe not just in you, but to believe you in the relationship you've established with us and that we can, com we can be confident, so we can grow in our confidence, Father, that we're hearing from you. And we're so thankful for the way that you confirm your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.